Hey everybody, this is Lois Banks coming back to you uh, from the Lois Banks Ministry. Uh, today's topic is going to be focused on faith and real faith in God that's connected to the Word of God, listening to the Word of God, believing the Word of God, and obeying God when He gives you specific instructions so that you can walk in manifestation. So I have a list of uh, great things God has done for me in my 30 years of walking with God. And I want to take you back first to, you know, give you a little history of my uh, childhood. Uh, my grandmother and uh, my aunts and, you know, my mom um, and my grandparents, you know, my grandfather, they were all believers. They all believed in God. Um, some family members went to church more uh, frequently and on a regular basis than others, but a lot of them were believers. So I was blessed to be born into a family that believed in God. My mom introduced me uh, to the Lord when I was a little girl, you know, I you know, before I gave my heart to the Lord and understood who he really was, my mother let me know that God was real and um, he's list he listens to your prayers. And she taught me the now lay me down to sleep prayer. And I just began to trust that God was real because my mom was very adamant about God being real. So I grew up um, as a child getting on the side of my bed every day on my knees, praying to God, talking to him and asking him to bless every family member by name. So I just naturally grew up believing and trusting in God before I really knew God for myself. I just believed that there was a God. So fast forward, you know, um, my mom pulls away from the church because she experienced something horrible in the church. And, you know, when people go through crazy stuff in church, it shatters their faith and it shatters their uh, belief system, you know, just a little bit. She never stopped believing in God. But, you know, when you don't go to church on a regular basis or if you're not listening to the word of God on a regular basis, if you stay away from the Bible and you're not reading it like you should, you actually forget what, how you're supposed to be walking up right before the Lord. And that's what happened in my life. You know, um, we, my mom still believed in God, but then little by little, little by little, the enemy was sifting my mother like wheat. You know, I saw things in the home that I shouldn't have seen. And I did not know how to walk up right before God. I just thought, you know, people were supposed to live their life any old kind of way, the way they wanted to live it. And, you know, that's all I really knew. Now, my grandmother, she was very strategic. My grandmother knew what was going on and she just kept my sister and myself in prayer on a continuous basis. She had her prayer warriors at church praying for us and my mother, you know, she was praying for the whole entire family. Whenever I spent time with my grandmother, my grandmother would always share Bible stories with me. So I knew certain Bible stories. You know, my mother, my grandmother was so strategic. She was planting the word of God in my spirit because she knew we weren't going to church on a regular basis. But when we did go to church, we went to the same family church that my grandmother was a deaconess in. And it was Mount Olivet Baptist Church. Pastor uh, Reverend Booth, Charles E. e. Booth was my uh, childhood pastor whenever my mom did go in to church. Pastor Booth always came to, uh, you know, Thanksgiving dinners. I saw him for years, um, you know, at my grandmother's home. I had, I highly respected him as a, as a man of God. And, you know, I really respected my grandmother. My grandmother is the one who taught me how to pray 
and on another level, on a deeper level on how to uh, trust that God hears and answers my prayers. You know, I can remember um, as a young girl, teenager, going to my grandmother, telling her I had a problem because I just trusted my grandmother so much. She had a certain way that she walked with God. She didn't shuck and jive and she didn't play games with God. I didn't see crookedness come out of my grandmother. And as a child, I was, you know, a student enough to realize that my grandmother is serving a God she really believes in by her lifestyle, you know, just by her lifestyle. I knew that she was really believing the Bible and believing that God is real, that he was watching her and hearing her prayers. So I would go to my grandmother. I would tell her I was, you know, going through some kind of challenge. And my grandmother, she was so strategic. She would say, okay, Missy, that's what they call me. She said, okay, Missy. She would get up and she would walk into her bedroom. She would keep her bedroom door open where I could see her. And then she would get herself down on her knees right next to her bed. And she would put her hands together and talk to God on my behalf where I could hear her and see her. And then she would close the prayer by saying, Father, I thank you for hearing my prayer and helping my granddaughter, Missy. Thank you for that. Amen. Then she would get up. She would look me straight in the eye and she would say, God heard it. He's going to, he heard the prayer and he's going to fix the problem for you. Don't even worry about it. Just watch and see what God does. And she would just walk past me and go about her duties inside of the house, whatever she was doing, preparing dinner or cleaning up the house. And, and then we would just switch the subject because she just had that faith that God heard her and that he was going to solve my problems. And that rubbed off on me as a kid. I'm sitting there watching that, you know. And sure enough, every time I went to my grandmother and my grandmother would pray on my behalf in front of me, I would see God answer my prayers. Those were powerful, powerful seeds that my grandmother placed inside of me. She was my walking, you know, epistle, my walking example of how to be with God, you know? But what I didn't quite understand was, um, you know, there's something called sin. I didn't even know what sin was. Um, my grandma had to be very careful about what she said to me because she didn't want me to not be in her presence. She didn't want my mother to possibly remove us from seeing her, you know, because we're call she's calling out sin. So my grandmother was very strategic on how she ministered uh, to myself, you know, to me. And um, so I'm telling you, I was you know, a little confused there because when I reached my early 20s, that's when God began to deal with me that I needed to walk upright before him. And I didn't even know what that meant. I had no idea what that meant. And, um, you know, I had gotten married really early. I was 21 years old when I got married. Um, I had a house, same house that I'm in right now. Um, you know, I had over a hundred thousand uh, dollars in the bank account you know, I had vehicles, I had, you know, all kinds of blessings in my life. God has always been good to me. He's always been good to me, even in my confusion of not knowing how to really walk upright and serve him. So in my early 20s, when I got married, I um, start going to church, you know, with my husband at the time because he went to church. Now, he went to a Presbyterian church and... They, you know, you didn't, you couldn't feel the presence of God. I knew something was a little off. I didn't quite know what it was. Um, it was like dry, you know, it was like going to hear something about God and you can't feel his presence, you know? And, um, but that was, you know, the belief system, um, for that church. So I went from Baptist where I could feel the presence of God 
to Presbyterian where it was dry as a bone, but I was still around the word of God. Okay. I was still around the word of God. So God used that as a platform to draw me closer to him. Um, I remember, uh, you know, coming home, you know, I would take care of the family, you know, cook dinner, prepare food and everything and take care of my family, wash up clothes, you know, just take care of the house. And during my quiet time when my family was settled, I started to open up my Bible and I began to read it from Genesis to Revelation. And God was drawing me towards his word. And um, I began to read where there were certain behaviors that God did not like. So, you know, I could feel in the conviction inside my spirit to make certain changes and to leave certain lifestyles alone, you know, um, and to, you know, just learn how to walk up right before the Lord, you know, for example, you know, learning how to walk in the fruit of the spirit. You know, I, I had a type of spirit where, you know, really basically I didn't mess with anybody. Um, but if you came at me, I was going to get you back. I'm going to get you back. Okay. But the Lord had to like deal with me on that. No, you can't do it like that. You're going to learn how to get on your knees Pray and talk to me, read my word, speak my word, and let me handle the situation. So stuff like that. You know, I had to learn how to please God and how to walk up right before God. And so as I began to position myself around the word of God, my faith in God began to grow. So when I was at home one day, I was just talking to God and I said, God, um, there's so many different uh, denominations in the Christian faith. What am I? Am am I Presbyterian? Am I Baptist? You know, you know. I started naming off all these different denominations, and the Spirit of God placed it in my heart that I'm a Christian, that I am a believer, and I am to believe the word of God from the book of Genesis all the way to Revelations and not to put any titles on what I am. So I said, okay. So I went with that. So I'm, you know, I'm listening to the word of God. I'm growing in my faith. I'm, I'm reading the Bible. And as I'm reading the Bible, God begins to develop a relationship with me where he's communicating with me more. He's talking to me more. Um, he's giving me direction. He started to give me direction to start visiting churches that were spirit filled. And I obey God. I, I began to go to spirit filled churches. And then I was like, Oh yeah. Okay. So that's what was missing in the Presbyterian church. You know, the presence of God wasn't there. That's why it felt so dry. And like, you know, you could hear the word of God being preached in the Presbyterian church, but you couldn't feel the presence of God. But nonetheless, God still used that as a tool to draw me closer to him. And I thank God for that um, experience. So here I am going to spirit-filled churches and churches who believe in miracles. Now, mind you, I believed in God um, and I believed to a certain level, you know, where... You know, I believe that God could get people houses and cars and, you know, heal people's bodies and, uh, you know, give money. But my mind and my spirit never went outside the box and to believe that God could perform miracles like he could in the Bible. So those are the type of churches God was sending me to. Churches where people, leaders believed in in the miracle working power of God. So, you know, all this was like brand new to me, you know, stuff I was hearing in church and the miracles I was hearing, hearing, I was just, you know, so outdone, but yet God was calling me to be in his presence and to learn, um, how to walk by faith, 
and the importance of staying connected to spirit-filled churches and churches who actually believe in the working power of God. So I was obeying God and God started performing so many miracles in my life. And that's what I want to share today. I want to talk about pure faith in God, how it's connected to the word and the importance of not contaminating the whole topic of faith and not getting corrupt with it, you know, because God is still calling for his people to walk by faith for real, to know God for real. So, you know, you know, I was like a baby Christian, you know, 30 years ago, and I'm learning that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God and that I needed to position myself around the word of God. So that's what I began to do. I began to, you know, go to church on a regular basis, go to church at a spirit filled church on a regular basis and listen to the word of God. And my faith in God began to grow. So one day, you know, I was, I was married at the time and, um, I was invited to hear, um, evangelist Simona Hall, um, minister the word of God at like a storefront church, a little small storefront church. And I, uh, you know, I went and I sat down and her whole topic was on miracles. And she said, the body of Christ needs to learn how to believe God for miracles because there might come a time where you can't reach your prayer partner or you can't reach your pastor and you need to know how to talk to God for yourself and believe for miracles. So, I mean, it was a strong message for, you know, like a baby Christian, but yet God wanted me to hear this message. So, you know, I'm sitting there listening to the woman of God and she was talking about how to see your faith in action because it's just not good enough to say you have faith. You have to see it in action to know that it's working and that it's, you know, it's, it's active. You know, you need to see that. So she said, start small, pray for a pair of socks. And just be patient with God and watch somebody come and hand you a pair of new socks without you asking for it. And that was the key. She said, don't ask anybody for it. Just talk to God and watch how God does that. Answers your prayer. So, you know, then she said, go to something that's going to, you know, pray for something that's going to uh, cause you to use a little bit more faith. Like maybe ask for a pair of shoes to God, but don't tell anybody what you you're praying to God and watch God touch the heart of somebody to bring you a pair of shoes. She said, everybody's faith is on different levels. She said, it might take two months for somebody to bring you a pair of socks, or it might take one week for somebody to bring you a pair of socks without you asking because everybody's on different levels of faith. But she said, this will be a great way to do homework with your faith and to watch how your prayers are being answered in the length of time for your prayers to be answered. And then she said, once you get used to God hearing you and answering your prayers and you can actually visually see your prayers being answered and you know that God is hearing you and you're not asking anybody to give you anything or to buy you anything, you know that God heard you himself. She said, you got to start learning how to believe for miracles. And then she gave an example of a miracle prayer she asked God to do. And when she said this example, I was just completely outdone because I had never heard anything like that ever in my life. She asked God, Evangelist Hall asked God to put gold crosses in her teeth. And she said she heard that God was doing it for other people and she wanted that experience. So then she told everybody uh, that we could come up and look inside of her teeth if we desire, if we didn't believe. And she also flowed in the uh, gifts of the spirit. 
And she could hear people's thoughts and perceive what people were saying, just like, you know, Jesus could. He could hear people's thoughts. She could hear in the realm of spirit. She knew what, pe what people were saying, thinking quietly in their spirit. And she spoke up. She said, hey, I can hear that thought. And I do have gold crosses in my teeth. If you want to come up here and take a look, you can. I'm telling you, I really wanted to go up there and look in her teeth. But... I was, you know, I didn't know that lady. I'm going to go look in her mouth and, and all of that. But I really wanted to know. So, you know, after the church service was over, you know, I left and I went home. And I was trying to actually pretend like I didn't hear that message. I mean, because it was the most unusual message I had ever heard in my life. And uh, I was trying to shake it out my spirit. But, you know, that seed was already planted. And so I told my husband, I said, hey, this is what I heard in church. What do you think? This man thought I had lost my mind. He said, what kind of church are you going to? And then he made fun of me. And then he went outside and told his neighbors that he think that I'm off into something crazy. And he made fun of me. And, you know, I just got a little attitude and I walked away and because that was my first time dealing with unbelief. So I was new at handling unbelief, you know, um, I was a baby Christian. So I just got a little attitude, walked away, went to the bathroom and I prayed. I talked to God. I said, hey, God, I said, is that woman of God lying to me or is she telling me the truth? Does she really have gold crosses in her teeth? I said, if, if she's telling me the truth, I said, Father, do my teeth like that. And so I just opened up my mouth. I pointed to my teeth with my first finger and I pointed to my teeth and I said, God, you know, I want you to do my teeth like that. And then I pointed to my finger, to my teeth. Y'all, I felt the power of God come out of my first finger. And it went into my teeth, went into the uh, back side on my left, back side on the right, up uh, in my, my upper back teeth. And I screamed because it felt like the drilling that you feel when you're at the dentist's office. And um, I had silver fillings in my teeth, but I didn't have gold. And I screamed. And then I, you know closed my mouth and I heard God say, open your mouth. And I opened up my mouth again and I felt the drilling sensation continue. Then it subsided, it stopped. And then God said, go look at your teeth. So um, I'm in the bathroom, it's nighttime outside. I pull out a drawer, pull out a, a you know flashlight and I look at my teeth and there I in the mirror, I see gold gold crosses in my teeth and I can't see the silver anymore and my husband you know he knew I had silver feelings so I was so excited I was so excited I went and I and I called my husband to come outside and take a look at my teeth in the bathroom he took the flashlight and he looked at my teeth and then it freaked him out he wanted to know where I got the gold crosses. He thought I had colored my teeth. And then he, he went into the bathroom and started pulling out drawers, trying to figure out if I had colored my teeth some kind of way. But I didn't. God did it because he lives inside of me. I have his spirit. And when I asked him a question, he came out of my own body to answer the question. So the, And so I could see it, right? Which is all linked to the message that the woman of God was saying. You know, she was telling us we have to learn how to get to the place where we can believe for miracles and not lean on other people. So I'm excited. My husband is like thinking I'm crazy. He thinks something wrong with me. He was so afraid of me and how God answered my miracle prayer with my teeth that he divorced me. He actually left me. Because God answered my prayer and because God was calling me to believe his word and to believe his power and to believe that God could do anything. So, you know, that was a hurtful situation um, that I went through, but I did not, I did not denounce God 
to stay with my husband. I said, if that man want to leave me because God is in my life, so be it. You know, so be it. You know, I just felt like my relationship with God was more important than me denouncing God and staying with a man. I chose God over my husband. This is a true story. This is my true testimony of what I have gone through to accept the Lord uh, Jesus Christ. So, you know, that miracle that God gave me broke all shackles in my mind and my spirit of what God could do and what he couldn't do. From that point on, I began to believe that God could do anything. If God could come out of my body and create gold in my teeth by coming out of my first finger and then just, you know, giving me a creative miracle like that, he could do anything. So that's where my faith in miracles was birthed. And um, I've been believing God for miracles ever since. See, once you get a miracle and you see a miracle, you never forget it. You can't forget it. And the same God that put the gold crosses in my teeth, I'm out on the battlefield in the world trying to tell people that God is real. Only believe, um, trust him. He lives inside of you. When you pray, he hears you. How, how can God not hear you when he lives in you? He hears you when you're praying. And I, I try to teach people how not to have doubt. Don't doubt God. But, you know, I thank God that he sent me strong, powerful leaders to train me and to tell me, hey, go do your homework in the faith area. There's some things you need to do to know that you're walking in faith and that your faith is active. You know, eventually Simona Hall, she gave us homework to do. She said, you need to go work on walking by faith. And so, you know, to this day, I know that God hears me. Every time I pray to him and there's a certain way that I walk with God, I do not play with God because I know he's real. You know, he is so real. He showed me how real he was. I'm not the type of Christian where I just say God is real. I know for a fact God is real. So I'm going to share some examples of what God has done with my life. And this is not the whole complete list, but I'm just going to start sharing some testimonies of what God has done in my life and why I believe so deeply like I do. And I just thank God for that. So I told you the story about the gold crosses. Now there's another story, gold cross story I want to share with you. Before I became a nurse, you know, I was working at Dunham Sporting Goods Store and I remember, uh, you know, do, just working there as a, as a, uh, as a worker and somebody from my church, the church I was going to at the time, which was Brightmore Tabernacle, um, they wanted this, this theme, this lady wanted to, you know, get employed at, uh, Dunham Sporting Good. And so I said, you know what, let me put in a good word for you. Come on up to your fellow application and you know, let's, let's see what happens. So she did. And this lady was a, um, Jewish lady. She has, she was Jewish heritage, but she was a born again, uh, believer in Christ and she was married. And, uh, she came in and she started working at Dunham's and what I used to do during my lunch hours is I used to go sit in my car and open up my Bible and read because I realized every time I spent quality time in the word of God and the word of God was going into my eyes, I can feel, um, the power of God get stronger and stronger and stronger inside of my body. I just felt that inside my spirit. So I stayed close to God and I stayed close to the word of God and the power of God. 
But one day, the the lady who got that job from my church, she asked me to pray with her uh, because she was having problems with her teeth. So I just felt led to open up my heart and tell her how God had placed gold crosses in my teeth and, you know, God can hear your teeth. So she said, Lois, do you think God will heal my teeth? I said, I'm sure he will. He did mine. You know, I'm just so innocent about everything and, you know, not really thinking about the magnitude of the miracle and what I'm saying, but I just started praying for her. We just start touching the green in prayer. And I pointed to her teeth with the same first finger. And when I pointed to the woman's teeth, she opened her mouth and I pointed to her teeth. God came out of my finger and went inside her teeth and put gold crosses at the top and at the bottom of her, her back teeth. She freaked out and screamed. She kept looking at her teeth in the mirror. She kept looking at her teeth in the mirror and she was like, so I'll do it. And so now her faith went to a whole nother level in God. And she understand that God lives inside of us for real, for real. And that he can come out and perform miracles anytime he wants. And, you know, that was just, you know, a blessing, you know. So she went home. The lady went home, shared the whole testimony with her, her husband, who was Jewish too. He's outdone. He now wants to like know the God that he and his wife and, and, and I know. And it was just a lot that happened and transpired, you know, off of that miracle of the gold crosses with the teeth, you know, um, the husband was a believer, but you know, God was pulling him into a higher level of having faith in him. So, you know, a uh, shout out to events in Simona Hall. I haven't seen you in a while, woman of God. You have been such a blessing to my life. I pray to God that all is well and that you hear this testimony. So that is one example or a couple examples of, uh, you know, miracles that God has uh, brought in my life. I have a, a testimony about the uh, the ATM. Uh, you know, so I told you that, you know, my husband left me. He didn't want to have any parts to do with me because of the miracle God gave me. He was afraid of me basically. And, you know, after I thought about it, I'm like, you know, I can kind of understand how somebody would freak out and get, get afraid because, you know, they didn't understand, you know, what God was doing, you know? And so, you know, of course I forgave him and everything and, and everything, but you know, I was so hurt behind the whole, whole situation because it's not like I called myself. God called me. He called me and he called me for a special work in the earth. And I mean, it all makes sense now, but at the beginning, you know, I didn't understand what God, what all God was doing. But, um, so, you know, I'm single, you know, I have children and, you know, money was getting a little low and I needed some money. And God told me to get up one day. I was watching a Christian television network and God told me to get up one day and go to my ATM. So um, I said, okay. Cause you know, when God tells me to do something, I just obey him. But in my mind, I was thinking, well, the, the bank, I don't hard, hardly have any money in there. Just enough to keep it open, you know, cause I was, you know, had to believe God for everything. I was a single parent. And so, um, I went to the bank, ATM machine, and God told me specifically what he wanted me to take out. He wanted me to take out $100. Y'all, I don't know where that money came from. But when I put in my PIN code, $100 came out. And it said, you have reached your limit for today. And that was, you know, that was like 30-something years ago. And so I got the money. I'm thinking to myself, well, praise God. God just gave me this miracle. And, um, I'm headed back to the car, but I see people, you know, standing behind me in a the line. They, they were waiting, uh, their turn to, you know, get to the ATM machine. And God told me to get back in line and take out another hundred dollars bill. I was like, praise God, you know, so I don't go to my car, I get back in line. When it's my turn again, he told me to take out another hundred dollars. So I took out another hundred dollars, two hundred dollars. I don't know where that money came from, y'all. I don't know where that money came from. So um, I got the two hundred dollars, and God told me to go 
to Northland Mall when it was opened and buy some suits that I wanted for my children because I had to do everything by faith because I was a single parent. So I would touch, I would go and touch what I wanted and tell God what I wanted and then he would just supply my needs. So I went to the mall and purchased the suits and stuff for my children so we they can go to church and and everything and when I was in in the mall, I passed another ATM machine and God let me to go take out another hundred dollars. So I went, took out another hundred dollars. Okay. When I got finished buying my children what they needed to wear for church, I had enough money left to put something on a bill that I owed. But God told me, nope, I don't want you to do that. I want you to go take yourself out for breakfast and get something to eat. So I said, okay. I went and got something to eat. But in my mind, I was trying to figure out with the money left after I get finished, you know, paying the bill for my meal. What was I going to say to the you know, the organization that I owed money to because I didn't have the full payment. But I obey God. I sat there and, you know, I was eating the food, enjoying the food. And then, you know, but in my mind, I was still trying to figure out what the heck I was going to say. But so I paid the bill. I went to go uh, pay my bill, you know, for breakfast. And then I went to go pay, you know, the bill that I owed. Um, and I walked through the door, you know, of, you know, the building that I went into and I asked them to, you know, I'm here to, you know, make payment on my bill. I'm still don't know what I'm going to say to them because I don't have all their money. And they pulled my name up and they said, Oh, okay. Um, your bill is paid in full. I said, hold up. I said, wait a minute. I said, can you, you know, pull my name up again. They looked again. They said, nope, you're paid in full. I said, well, praise God. I knew God was doing something with computers that day. You hear me? From the ATM to paying off my bill. So when I turned around to walk out the door to get ready to, you know, get back in my car, I heard God say, pay tithes and offerings off that money I just blessed you with. I gladly I gladly gave God tithes and offerings off that money because he had did something so wonderful for me. It was just beautiful the way God just worked with me. You know, I trusted God, you know, here I am, you know, um, a single parent, you know, I don't have my family with me. My family is in Ohio and I'm here, you know, believing God you know, for everything, you know, for, for the needs of my family, my, my children, uh, paying bills. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing my faith in action, just like the woman of God taught me in church. So I know my faith is, is active because I see it. I see my faith in action. So, you know, I shared that with people and I, Tell people all the time, you know, God is good. He, he don't worry. He gonna answer your prayers. He's he he hears you. You know, if you accepted Christ in your heart and you're filled with the presence of God and you live in right, God hears you. He can hear everything you're saying. He's right inside of you. He can hear you. So I shared that story with the um, ATM, and then. Um, I remember um, looking down at my car so I can make sure I share you know, different testimonies with you. Um, I remember I was, you know, I'm still a single parent. I'm, I'm believing God, uh, you know, for a certain dollar amount because, you know, I've got some other bills to, to pay. And this is like a whole different, you know, time in my life. And I was a member uh, of Greater Grace Temple at the time with uh, Bishop. Ellis, the senior, was alive, okay? And that church was rocking with power. There was so much power in that church. My goodness, I love going to that church when Bishop was alive. And um, one day, God just spoke to me. He said, I want you to get up. And he told me he wanted me to go to a church called Faith for Miracles off the boulevard. And it was a church that I would go to from time to time whenever God let me to go. 
And so I was like tugging in my spirit because I really wanted to go to uh, Great Grace Temple because, I mean, the power of God was so high. But I knew to obey God. I knew to obey God. So it was a little struggle in my spirit, but I obeyed God. I went to uh, the church called Faith for Miracle. Um, the pastors were Richard and Cleta Brooks. And um, they've since gone on to be with the Lord. But oh my goodness, that church was something else. It was a church where they believed in the miracle working power of God. And so after the church service, um, a Caucasian lady walked up to me. And she, you know, introduced herself to me and I introduced myself to her and she told me it was her first time at that church. And she began to tell me that God told her in church to write me out a dollar amount in, in the form of a check. So she asked me for my name, correct spelling my name and everything. And she wrote the check out and she handed it to me. Y'all, when I looked at that check, it was the amount that I was believing God for. God used a complete stranger to answer my prayers. And now see, this is the same message that Evangelist Simona Hall was telling us, teaching us. She said, you should be able to see your prayers in action, your faith in action, you know? And so I told the lady, thank you so much that I was believing God for a certain amount of money and, and thank you for obeying God. And she asked me, if we can exchange telephone numbers because she wanted, you know, she wanted to talk to me. And, um, I said to her, um, you know, I didn't have a phone cause I did not have a phone at that time when, um, my husband walked off and left me basically the money left. Okay. And I didn't want to put my babies in, um, you know, childcare and have somebody else watching my children. I was very protective over them. And so I didn't have any choice but to believe God. I didn't have no choice but to believe God. So um, she said, Lois, you don't have a phone? I said, nope. So this lady said, give me your address and I'm going to put in a phone for you and pay your phone bill until you can get back on your feet. So that's exactly what happened. She put in a phone in my house and paid my phone bill for a whole year. God was so good and so faithful to me. And I'm so glad that I obeyed God when he led me to go to that church. The way God did it was very interesting. Sometimes I can hear God say specific words. Sometimes he just drops a message in my spirit and he dropped a message in my spirit to go to faith for miracles for that Sunday. So, you know, I'm, I'm walking in a miracle. I've got some money to pay some bills to do what God, what I need to do for my household and for my family. And I'm still in the same house that I was in when I was 21 years old. I am now 56 years old and I am still in this same house. Do you hear me? God has been faithful. He has been so faithful to me. I just try to tell everybody about the faithfulness of God in, in helping his people. So, you know, most of the time, you know... 99.9% .9 of the time, you know, I had plenty of food in the house for me and my family, my children. But there was this one time I was getting really, really low. I had paid my tithes and offerings, paid my bills. I was getting low on food in the house. And I'm not into begging people for anything. I'm just, that's just not my nature. You know, I believe that if you're a Christian, you should not be begging and soliciting people for anything. You should have faith inside of you to talk to your God, the God you claim you serve, and ask him for help for whatever it is you need. Okay. So um I talked to God. I said, hey God, you know, pay my tithes and my offerings. You know, I'm getting low on food for my children. I need some help. I just told God I need some help. And so uh God used the wealthy woman the Caucasian wealthy woman to call me and she, this is what she said to me on the phone. She said, Lois, God is telling me that you and the kids need food. Do you need food? I said, yes, I do. 
She said, Lois, you have my telephone number. Why didn't you call me and ask for help? I said, because I don't walk with God like that. I don't walk with God going around begging people for anything. I trust God that he hears my prayers when I talk to him. He knows I did everything in my power to do the right thing for my family and for the kingdom of Christ. And I just trust that God is going to help us. I don't know how he's going to do it. All I know is he's going to do it because he hears me. Because I know he hears me when I talk to him. She said, Lost, I'll be over there. She hung up the phone. Y'all, she came to my house. She took me grocery shopping and she said, put whatever it is you want in that cart. Y'all, I had so much food, so much food in my refrigerator, in my freezer, in my cabinets. God came in and he did not let me and my children starve. He helped us. Do you hear me? And he helped us without me begging. And this is a message for single uh, women. Women, you do not have to sleep around and have sex with men to get money to feed your family and take care of your bills. Your father in heaven, if you accepted Jesus Christ and filled with the spirit, your father in heaven will take care of you better than any man ever will. Do you hear me? If, if you're single, okay? This is for single women. This is a message for single women. So God, is, you know, he blessed me with food and I was able to take care of my, my, my children, you know, and, you know, I was just so grateful. And again, I saw my faith in action. Okay. Now there was another time when God sent me, you know, I was just going to church like I normally did, um, to greater grace temple. And I was, you know, uh, you know, went to uh, Bible study and then I sat in church and there was a black lady sitting next to me and God talked to her and told her to write me a check. So the lady wrote me a check. It was, you know, wasn't that much money, but I was very grateful. You know, whatever it is God wanted to do, I was grateful. I looked at the check. I told the lady, thank you for obeying God. And I told God, thank you right there. You know, I held the check up to God and I said, I thank you, God, for that, for anything that you give me. I'm very grateful. And the woman took the check from me and tore it up. And then God told her to increase the dollar amount. So she increased the dollar amount. And then she handed me that check. So, you know, the amount in the check had increased. I was like, well, praise God. You know, I told the lady, thank you for obeying God. And again, you know, I told God, thank you. Because God doesn't have to do anything. You know what I'm saying? If he does anything, I am so grateful. Because he didn't have to help me. He didn't have to do anything. And I looked at the check. I thanked God for it. She took that check again and tore it up. Do you hear me? And then she wrote out another dollar amount. Y'all, I had a couple hundred dollars. You you hear me? And I said, God, thank you so much. I gave him tithes and offerings off that money. And I, you know, got some things that I needed, you know, for my family. And I told God, thank you. See, this is the God I know. This is the God I serve. You know, I serve a God where I don't have to beg anybody for anything. I don't have to solicit anybody for anything. And this is how God set up my ministry. He set my ministry up not to beg, borrow, or steal. And that's just how it is. That's why. So if you see me post a lot of messages on social media in this area, it's because I know better. I know we're not supposed to be doing that. So, you know, we're supposed to be using our faith and, you know, we're supposed to be using our faith for real and not shucking and jiving and playing games. So that's my story about that situation. And then I got a situation about, um, you know, um, a car that God gave me, um, you know, I needed, um, a vehicle, you know, I needed a vehicle. And, um, a young prophet, a guy that I used to work with, you know, when I was a nurse, 
at this time, um, he was trying to get me to go to his church and, you know, to, you know, he wasn't interested in me at that time, you know, as a, a, a interested, you know, person. He was just trying to get people to go to his church. So I uh, had his number. He was a young prophet. He was around my kids, my children's aid, you know, and he asked to borrow some money so that he could get a church, go to go somewhere, go to church, go some, do something or get back to work. That's what it was. He wanted to get back to work, but he didn't get paid to a certain time. So I said, you know, I said, well, let's pray and talk to God about that, you know? And so I touched and agreed with him in prayer, asked God to bless him with some money so he could get, you know, uh, to work. He called me back within a half hour and said, Lois, you're not going to believe this. He's like, but yes, you are. He said, I didn't ask anybody for no, any money in my house, but my mother handed me uh, $150 and my brother handed me $20. I got $170 within a half hour. So, you know, my mind is thinking. I said, hold up. God is answering prayers quick today. So I pay attention to how God moves each day. Each day he moves a little different. Some days it'll be days for miracles. Some days it'll be days for, you know, revelation knowledge. Some days it'll just be days, you know, where God is uh, showing you visions and dreams. You know, I just pay attention to how God moves each day. You know, I just pay attention to God. And so I said, okay, you know what? God is moving quick today. He's answering prayers quick today. I want you to touch and agree with me, man of God, that I get the down payment on the car. Now, see, that's where my faith was at the time. My faith wasn't at the level where, you know, God give me the money, pay it off in full. I was at the give me some money for a down payment faith. Okay, that's where I was. And, you know, I'm still growing. So, um, the man of God stopped and he said, you know what? He said, Lois, you don't have to, you don't have to work any overtime or anything to get the down payment for this car. I see somebody walk into your house, ringing your doorbell, and handing you ten one hundred dollar bills. So I know the word of God. You know, you believe the prophet, and so shall you prosper. So I just received it by faith. It's not hard for me to believe a prophetic word. And I didn't know what woman was going to walk to my house with ten one hundred dollar bills. I had no idea who would do that for me. But um, God did. And God had already orchestrated all of this. And so I just believed it by faith, told God, thank you. You know, I I can believe before I see it. That's just how I am. You know, I believe it before I see it. I told God, thank you. And within a half hour, my doorbell rang. It was my ex husband's now girlfriend okay at the time she said lois i found out from the kids that you need a vehicle and she her she told me that her mother had uh passed away and she's liquidating her assets and she said oh my god she said i know you're a woman of faith she said i want to know if i could be a blessing to you and give you a thousand dollars you know for a down payment of your car I said, sure. Y'all, when she put that money in my hand, it was 10 $100 bills, just like the prophet of God told me on the telephone. I threw my hands up and praised God for that one. You hear me? I said, uh-huh. God is consistently watching everything I'm doing. He's paying attention to everything, and I'm paying attention to him. Okay? If God moved left, I'm moving left. If he moved right, I'm moving right. If he moves straight, I'm moving straight. If he if he stops, I'm stopping. Whatever whatever God is doing, I'm right there, right there with him. Do you hear me? So I was so excited, and I called the man of God and gave him uh, my testimony, and I gave him ten percent of that thousand dollars. I went and got my car. Do you hear me? And I got the car that I wanted, which was a neon at the time. And, uh, God was good to me, you know? So everything, y'all, everything in my life has been centered around me using my faith. Just like that woman that God 
preached in the little storefront church. That's how my whole life has been since I started walking with God. So, yeah, I shared uh, that story. So let me share another one. Um, I remember uh, when I was a single uh, parent, my mom came to live with me. Um, she came from Columbus, Ohio, and she wanted to know if she could stay with me because my basement was completely complete, you know, was completely uh, done. It had a kitchen area, sleeping area in the bathroom. But she wanted to stay in that part of the house and because she just received a new management position at a hair salon called Accent, you know, and, um, here in Southfield, Michigan, you know, it's gone now. It was inside of Northland Mall, but I said, sure, mom, you can come stay with me. Um, wonderful. So she came and she was living with me and, um, uh, one night, I went to uh, Grady Grace Temple to hear uh, Maddie Moss Clark, the Clark sister's mother when she was alive, do a musical. And my mom had agreed to uh, watch my children. And I didn't have central air at the time, but I have it now. And uh, my mom agreed to watch my children. So y'all, I'm going to to Grey Grace Temple with a male friend of mine. We weren't boyfriend and girlfriend. We were just good friends from the church. And he came and picked me up. We went to uh, Grey Grace Temple. We were, uh, you know, listening to the music selection of uh, Matt and Mars Clark. And uh, we were just worshiping God. And it was time for, um, you know, the offering to come and, you know, I felt a tug in my heart that I need to give a little bit more in the offering. So, you know, I've learned through the years, you know, you obey God. If he tells you give a little bit more money, you give a little bit more money. And I gave more money the way God told me to give it. And I went home, you know, my friend dropped me off. I went home and um, it was just so muggy hot outside. And, you know, I live... Um, in a brick home, um, there used to be like a Jewish community, uh, way back, you know, in time. And, um, I didn't have central air at the time, you know, I do have it now, but it was just so muggy hot in my house. It was just so muggy hot. So I decided not to go to bed upstairs and my room was upstairs on a, on a third level. And, um, I decided to sleep downstairs on my couch and it was so hot I'm not trying to be funny but I just had on a bra and my panties because it was just so muggy hot I, I had to share that story so you'll know how I was sleeping on the couch okay because I'm, I'm you gonna figure out where I'm going with the story so I'm sleeping on the couch and my son who's like 18 months at the time he's sleeping uh, next to me on the love seat. So he's on the love seat and I'm on the couch because my, my son at the time, he didn't want to sleep, you know, separate from me. So he's sleeping on the love seat and my mom's downstairs in the basement sleep and she sleeps like a rock. She can't hear nothing when stuff is going on, but you know, once she sleep and so she's sleeping like a rock and my two older children are upstairs in their room sleep. Okay. Now, mind you, my children are filled and uh, filled with the spirit of God. They accepted Christ when they were young. I mean, I think my son might have been 10 at the time and my daughter was like um, eight. Okay. When this story happened. So I'm conked out sleep. The whole house is sleep. It's muggy hot. It is so freaking hot in the house. Uh, I left my TV on, fell asleep with the TV on. Okay. In the middle of the night, y'all, I hear footsteps in my house. Now, my children normally don't wake up. My older children don't wake up in the middle of the night. I mean, the only time they wake up in the middle of the night, if something going on, their stomach hurts, something, you know, something like that. But most of the time, you know, they slept through the night. 
I know my mother slept through the night and I looked to the right. My, my 18 uh, month old was asleep. So I'm trying to figure out whose footsteps that was in, in the house. So naturally, you know, I called out, I called out for my mom. I didn't hear anything. Footsteps stopped. Then I hear the footsteps again and they sounded really, really heavy. I'm like, okay, you know, I'm starting to wake up now. I'm like, okay, that's not my children. Cause my children, that's too heavy. Foot, the footsteps are just too heavy for my children. I just felt something inside to sit up because I was in trouble. So I'm sitting up in the corner of my couch, and now my eyes are trying to adjust to the darkness. I see my 18-month-old baby to the right. I know my mom still sleep downstairs because she's not answering me. And I know my children are still upstairs because they not answering me when I called out. All of a sudden, y'all, I see a man walk around my corner, corner of the, of the wall, from the wall, from the dining room. And this man was huge. He looked like he was 200, 300 something pounds. He was really tall, like six five six six and he was a black man and I was in trouble I knew I was in trouble and I knew that I think he was a sergeant or a lieutenant lived right next door to me his name was uh, Mr. Fisher in the police department and I knew that but my so when I'm in trouble my mind gets to thinking you know how how am I gonna uh, save myself. How I'm gonna save my children. How I'm gonna save my mother. You know, how I'm gonna save all of our lives. You know, that's how my mind is thinking. And so, the Holy Spirit placed it in my spirit. Call on the name of Jesus, like you learned in Grady Grace Temple. Call on the name of Jesus. So y'all, with all of my might, I screamed out the name of Jesus. I screamed. It was like a curling scream. Because we were in trouble. When I called out the name of Jesus, the man who was standing up in front of me fell like a foot away from me. And he was on his knees. He looked around the room to see if there was going to be any movement. To see if anybody was going to walk around or move around in the house. There was no movement. It was just me and this man. And the angels of God and the power of God in that room. Y'all hear me? So the man got back up again and he walked towards me again. I said, well, it worked the first time. I better do it again. I called on the name of Jesus. I screamed it as loud as I could. And the man fell a foot away from me again. So when the man fell the second time on his knees where I could see him, it was like he was knocked down to his knees. I start thinking in my head, you know what? I'm going to call my mother. I'm going to scream her name because she going to hear me. And she going to run up these steps with her gun. Because my mother wasn't playing. My mother was strapping guns in Detroit. She's like, I ain't used to this people doing crazy stuff. I'm bringing my gun. So, but my mama didn't hear me. My mom slept like a rock. She didn't hear me screaming her name. And amazingly, my 18-month-old child slept through that whole thing i think the heat pretty much knocked him out you know because he didn't even move so there was like no power in my mother's name this man was able to get to me put his hands around my mouth and start pushing my head down uh in the church and i felt the holy ghost inside say call on the name of jesus one more time with the man's hands on my mouth, I said, Jesus! I screamed Jesus' name. Y'all, I'm telling you, I felt the Holy Ghost inch up my stomach. He started going up my through the middle of my breastbone. So now, you know, my focus is on the Holy Ghost inching up my body. And then, like a volcano, the power of God came out of my mouth, pushed the man back a foot away from me, on, and he ended up on the floor again. The man got up, 
walked out of my house through the, the through a window he got through. And what you don't know is before I left to go hear Matty Moss Clark at Great sing at Grady Grace Temple, there was a window in my back room on the first level. And when I walked past the window, I had such an eerie feeling on the inside to the point where I went to the window and I looked at the window. I pushed on the window, make sure it was secure. It was secure. So I made sure I told my oldest son, my oldest daughter, I said, y'all don't play with this window. Something going on with this window. I don't know what it is, but I got a bad feeling about that window. So when I left and I went to church, that's when my oldest daughter, who was like about eight at the time, she started playing around with the window. She left the window open. And God was warning me through that eeriness that there was somebody lurking outside of my, my house and my window. So when God told me to give that extra money, y'all, that was to protect everybody in that house. Do you hear me? That man got up. Walked through my house, got himself out the window. So I was about to run out the door in my bras and my panties, you know, but the Holy Ghost told me to be still. And when I was stay still, I saw the man go down my driveway riding a 10 speed bike. Okay. I went and turned on all the lights in my house, went to the back to see where he got out. And it was through the same one that the Holy Spirit had warned me about. But he didn't break in it. It was left open. That meant somebody was playing around with the handle. Okay? And it was my daughter. I found out it was my daughter later. And I explained to her what happened, you know. So I closed the window back. I called the police. The police came to my house. But before they arrived, you know, I sat down. And I was like, praise God, nobody got raped. Nobody got hurt. Nobody got shot. Nobody got stabbed stabbed we all survived that break in and the holy ghost spoke in my spirit and he said now you go tell what great things your god has done for you y'all i've been telling this story ever since if you're ever in trouble and you need i mean you need help like right now call on the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. If you just say Jesus, 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 the power of God come on the scene. Do you hear me? To deliver you, to protect you. Don't forget that. That is such a key uh, of wisdom to know. I know how much power is in the name of Jesus because I saw it firsthand through many dangerous toils and snares. I have already come. Okay. So yes, the enemy came to steal, kill and destroy, but God protected me and, he, and God let me know I'm in you. And, you know, I felt the Holy Ghost inch his way up my body and come out of my mouth like a force, like a volcano. Do you hear me? So much that it made that man fall a foot away from me and knocked him on his knees. So I definitely want to, uh, you know, praise God for, you know, if it hadn't been for the Holy Ghost and God, y'all, none of us might not have been here. Okay. God is a deliverer. He will deliver you from whatever it is that you are going through. Okay. So I made sure I shared that story with you and then. Uh, what else I want to share with you? Um, I can share with you, um, my experience of, uh, going to heaven. Um, actually the story about somebody breaking into my house, that's in a book that I wrote entitled, uh, walking with God. And, uh, a lot of my testimonies is, are inside of that book. And that's, um, uh, the, that particular book is a movie, you know, I'm creating a movie out of that particular book, walking with God. So 
you know, just giving praise and honor to God, let, sharing my faith, sharing what God has done with me, you know, in my life and how good he is to me. And, um, um, okay. So my testimony about going to heaven, um, I didn't ask to go to heaven. I didn't say, Hey God, I want to see heaven. I didn't say none of that, but I always had a fear of death. And I think most people do, you know what I'm saying? And so, uh, one day when I was married, I was still married at that time. Um, my husband was sleeping in the bed. I was sleeping in a recliner in the front room. My children were sleeping in the bed. And then when I woke up, I was standing outside of my body. I was, my spirit wasn't inside of my body and I could see my body laying limp in the recliner. And there was a gold, there was an angel standing next to me with a gold face. And that angel escorted me in the presence of God. Now, in my mind and in my spirit, I didn't want to go because I didn't want to leave my babies. I didn't want to leave my children. My children were in my spirit and on my mind. I, I, I didn't want to leave them. But I was summoned. I was summoned to heaven to stand in the presence of God. And so I'm standing in the presence of God. Um, the, the, the power of God is so uh, uh, powerful that it lights up the whole city. Just the power coming out of God lights up the whole city of heaven. And the white that's up there is whiter than any white that I've ever seen. And what God allowed me to do was he allowed me to worship him um, in a dance. And I did because when I'm at home, I always give my whole body over to God and I worship him in a dance, like a little ballet dance. And I let God know how much I love him. And, and it's a part of my worship, you know, to God. And he allowed me to do that um, in his presence. And then God himself, God himself, okay. God himself opened up a book that looked just like our Bible. But this book, the letters and every word, they like vibrated. Like, like it had a pulse, like it was alive. And then the letters kept getting larger, 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 vibrating, pulsating. And then it would just went across my spirit and God placed that word inside my belly, inside my spirit. And he explained to me how much power is in his word and every letter of his word. And that the word of God is anointed and that you can't separate God from his word because God is the word. Okay. It's just another format of God. So he, he gave me a lesson when I was in heaven and then she explained to me to stop being afraid of death because there's no fear in death. And then when you cross over, you're, when you're a believer, you go with the Lord. You're, you're in heaven with the Lord. There should be no fear attached to crossing over. So I was delivered instantly a fear in that area. Okay. God, after he got finished giving me all my lessons about the word of God, I mean, I got a lesson about the power of the word of God, like no other. Okay. Then he spoke to me, get back in my spirit. And I woke up and I immediately got up, you know, I was like, well, praise God. You know what I'm saying? All power is in God's hand. He has the power He's got all power at all times to do whatever it is he want to do because he got. So he let me know that he's God and he's God and Lord over my life. And he can do whatever it is he wants to do anytime he want to do it. So, you know, hey, hey, I'm like, yes, sir. Whatever it is you want to do, sir. Okay, God. So as a nurse. I began to minister to people who were getting ready to make their transition that who were believers in Christ. So, you know, I recognized that fear of death, you know, with my patients. So the ones who were believers and it was time for them to go, 
I would sit next to them and explain to them what they were going to see in heaven and what they were going to experience and to not to be afraid. You see what I'm saying? God used that experience for me to minister to people who were getting ready to make their transition whose time whose time was up you know it was time for them to 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 go they you know completed their assignment on the earth and it was time to go home and be with the lord so i you know was able to share and minister to people you know um in that area and you know for all of you all who don't believe, I'm telling you right now, heaven is a real place. You cannot play with your salvation and live any old kind of way. You can't. Whatever God has written in the word of God for how you're supposed to live, you have to practice doing that. I know there's a lot of foolishness and shucking and jiving going on in these churches today and in the world today when it comes to God. But I'm here to tell you, and I'm a witness, you can't live any old kind of way and, and get into heaven with God. You know, you, you cannot be having sex and you not married. You can't be going around, walking around with unforgiveness in your heart. You got to forgive everybody to come up against you. And I, and Lord knows I've ha I've done a lot of that, you know, in my walk with God, because there are people have done some crazy stuff to try to come up against me in my walk with God. And I've had to forgive every, every last one of them. You hear me? And uh, you know, that's for another story. If y'all want to hear some of the crazy stuff, crazy battles I've gone through with Satan, go look at my, um, YouTube video on my YouTube page, LM, LMB Network, and you will see, you can look at that uh, video. I'm dressed in army fatigues, and I just open up and I share, you know, all of the hurtful, horrible stuff, fights that I've gone through uh, with Satan. So, you know, for me to have... The level of faith that I have in God and keep going from glory to glory. You know, darkness doesn't like that. And darkness tries to find ways to stop the people of God from growing and, and moving forward. But you can't let it. So I decided I wasn't going to let darkness stop me. And I just kept going. I just kept growing in God. And I'm still doing that today. You know, I have a very active fasting and prayer life because I push back darkness off of me and my family. Um, I take one day a week and fast. I don't eat and I just fill up with the word of God, the Old Testament and the New Testament. And I just fill up with the word of God and I pray in tongues for the whole day. And I'm constantly praying over me and my family because of the crazy stuff I, I've gone through, you know, and I've kept the faith. I've kept the faith and I've fought a good fight. Do you hear me? And I keep fighting, I keep fighting, I keep fighting with the word of God. And, um, and it's a good fight because we always win with the word. So I just want to make sure I open up and share a little bit about me and why I believe like I do um, in God. It's because I've had so many evidences of God being real and hearing me and and I'm seeing my faith in action. I'm not just, you know, having lip service telling everybody God is real. I know God is real. He is real. And I, I, I don't play games with him. You know, I respect and I honor God. And um, mm, my God, he's been so good to me and my family. God has delivered us from so much. But he's, his mercy endures forever. And if you're going through anything, trust God. 
and believe him and never, ever, ever let go. The tears I have are tears of joy and respect and honor for God. I would not be here today if God had not delivered me and saved me and protected me and showed me himself how powerful his word is. I want everybody to connect with the word of God and to believe it for real. Don't have believe God's word. Believe it. In the beginning was the word of God. The word of God was with God and the word of God was God. First John 1 and 1. Do you hear me? God is a deliverer and I want you to believe the word of God. The same way God answers my prayers and manifests blessings and creative miracles. I, I want the same for you. I want the same for the world. I want people to know that God is real. He's real. And that's why I, I obey God and I, I, I get on television and I tell people these stories and I, I try to share as much as I can on television and on social media. Um, I'm driven inside of my spirit to share the goodness of God because darkness is so dark and people are so lost and the church is playing so many games. God needs real believers to stand up to Satan and all this nonsense and all the shenanigans and tell the truth and teach people like evangelist Simone taught me how to activate your faith, how to believe that God hears you when you're praying. Okay. And that same faith will protect you from trouble and making bad choices. If you learn how to pray and hear from God, he'll protect your life. He'll, he'll protect you like he protected me. Like he told me to, you know, give more in the offering. You see what I'm saying? You know, and I know not to be disobedient to God. Cause if you're disobedient to him, it can cost you your life. Or if God tells me to stay away from people because they're trying to hurt and harm you, I stay away from them. I stay away from people who try to hurt me. Or if God says, you know, don't go down a certain road or don't go down a certain street. I don't go down that street. If God tells you to do anything, listen to him because it's going to protect you and your family. So I just want everybody to know why I, I, I preach like I do, why I pray like I do, why I rebuke like I do, why I am like I am, because this is who God, God created me like this. This is how he created me. And I want the world to know that God is real. He is real, whether people are cutting up in front of you or not, whether the church is cutting up or not, whether people running game or not, he's still real. That does not change the fact that God is real. Okay. And there are other people like me. There's more people like me out there. I'm not the only one who know God for real and who's serving God for real without shenanigans and games. There are other people like me. I know they are because I'm running into them. So listen, this is a word for the world. It's a word for the church. Okay. Let's not play no games. Let's serve God for real. Let's practice walking up right before God. Activate your faith. Know that God hears you when you are praying. Don't run games. Don't run money games. Don't do that because you're misrepresenting God. You're misrepresenting God. And then you're going to have to uh, 
you're going to have a conversation with God about that, about running games and misleading people and stealing from the kingdom of Christ. Don't do that. So this is Lois Banks coming to you again through Lois Banks ministry with a word of encouragement. God bless everybody today. Have a good day.